Well, hey, uh, Cornerstone Faith Community Church Sunday School teachers, um, Pastor Jeremy here, and uh, as promised, I'm gonna um, I'm preparing a tutorial video for you uh, to give you a, a little bit better clarity on how the virtual Sunday School model um, is gonna work for our, our for our church. Um, as you know, we have decided to utilize a virtual Sunday School model. Um, for the foreseeable future, probably the better part of this Sunday school year, um, as we just uh, don't believe that there's a safe way that we can um, have students be in person uh, for Sunday school this year. So we're we're really, really excited about this virtual model, but I know it can be very confusing, especially for folks who do not have kids that are um, doing remote learning right now. Um, if you do have kids that are doing remote learning, this should be um, somewhat familiar to you. There's a likelihood that you're using Google Classroom, which is what we're utilizing for this platform. A um, few preliminary questions that people have had. First is, do I have to have a Google account in order to do this? You don't. It's certainly much easier if you do have a Google account. Um, everything works so seamlessly, but, um, but, but Google should um, be able to um, uh, utilize whatever email address you currently have, um, and uh, you can get that linked up to the classroom, and you can access the classroom via any, any email address. Um, if you don't mind taking the time to create a Google account, it probably is best for you and will be most simple for you to do that but you're not necessarily required to. Uh, another question is, um, you know, what are, what are the requirements of teachers? What are, you at, what are you asking me to do? As we get into the classrooms, I'll define that a little better, um, but basically we're just asking for two things. One is we're asking for one volunteer each week to help us record a mini lesson video. And the other thing is we're asking you to help out with, um, with the reward system for our memory verses, which will all make sense in just a moment. Uh, that's basically it. Um, we're not asking you to upload content, anything of that nature. We are asking that you would check in with your classroom throughout the week, and if anybody's posted anything, try to respond to it. Um, and you'll see in a moment um, where you would find those things. Um, the, other, the, the last thing I want to talk about first is, uh, is notifications. Some of you mentioned, hey, I got like 19 emails in one day. Um, what's going on with all this stuff? Why is it flooding my uh, inbox? The reason you've gotten so many um, emails is because we've been uploading stuff for the first couple of weeks all at one time. Normally, you won't get so many at one shot. Um, you can certainly turn off the notifications in your Google Classroom so that you don't get any emails, and I'll try to remember to show you how to do that as we're looking through this. Um, but it is good to have those notifications because then if a student posts a question or some other kind of content, you can go, you can know that it's there and you can go in and uh, interact with it when it is convenient for you to do that. So um, with that, let me turn over to our classrooms and start walking you through a little bit uh, of what it looks like. Um, so you should now see on your screen um, our Google Classrooms. We have four classrooms established. We have a junior high classroom here. We have a third and fourth grade classroom that we're calling our elementary classroom. We have an early elementary classroom that is preschool, kindergarten, first grade, and second grade. And then we have our toddler room, toddlers twos and threes. Um, each of these classrooms is just a slight bit different from the others. Um, we tried to make uh, content most appropriate for each of those grades. In some instances, we've utilized the same content across all four classrooms because believe it or not, it really is applicable. Um, uh, so you'll see some of those things happen. Let me start here with the junior high classroom. And if you're not a junior high teacher, don't necessarily tune out because um, you'll get the basic gist of what your classroom is going to look like as soon as we get there. And I promise I won't try to take too much time on any one classroom. I'll let you do some exploring on your own. Um, uh, I should mention before we go any further, however, that in order to get to the place where you're going to see your uh, classroom, you have got to respond to that email you should have already received asking you to join the Google Classroom. Um, if you don't have that any longer, I can certainly resend it to you. You just need to let me know that you need it again and I can make it available to you. But once you click join, you're going to be connected to that classroom and you'll get all the notifications and you'll have access uh, to see what's happening in the classroom and interact with it. So let's start in the junior high classroom. Um, here in the junior high classroom, I want to show you that on the front page, you're going to have what's called a stream. This stream is communication that's happening between myself, you teachers, 
Miss Carol uh, Cosentino, Miss Carol Lindhorn, the, the students and the parents. Um, students are only going to have access to this via their parents' email address. So really that's going to happen together as a family component. Uh, but this is a great place for us to communicate back and forth with one another. You can see here, let me see if I can make this a little bigger for you, that we've got a sort of a welcome a statement made here. And, and we are encouraging our junior high families to consider purchasing two uh, resources. One is How Great Is Our God? 100 Indescribable Devotions About God and Science. And one is belief, Big Beliefs, Small Devotions devotions, introducing your family to big truths. These two, uh, um, uh, uh, I'm sorry, there's one other one, amazing stories for young believers. These three um, resources all together, we're talking about, about $45, but these are resources that'll be uh, useful for them for several years. And um, we also want to uh, make sure that we're bringing to attention for our junior high families and really for everybody, not so much the toddler families, but everybody else. Um, there's other, two other great options. These are totally optional if they wanted to purchase them. One is the Illustrated Family Bible, which is just phenomenal. Um, it looks like this, um, like that, and uh, it has great photos and information on the inside um, that really um, any age group is going to really benefit from this. Um, and then uh, the other one is the um, Family Reading Bible, which is just a great study Bible as a family, has um, age-based questions and uh, great reading plans involved in it. So these are some things we're encouraging our junior high families to purchase. But this is the stream area where you're going to have all that communication going on back and forth between teachers, students, myself, and so on and so forth. If we go up here and we click on classwork, you're going to begin to see the um, classroom. At the very beginning of the classroom, there is a welcome to CFCC Virtual Sunday School that includes a Virtual Sunday School tutorial video and a welcome video, which has been uh, put together by uh, Ms. Carol Constantino. The second category is the weekly lesson videos. Here is where if you as teachers are willing um, to record a five to eight minute video, um, we just need one teacher across all four classrooms per week. One teacher across all four classrooms per week. And that one teacher would have to requ record just one five to eight minute video that I will supply you bullet points and talking points for. I can help you record it. You can come to the church. We can do it together. Or you can be feel free to do it from your own home if you're capable of doing that. This is where we really need our teachers is in this weekly lesson video component. If you were to go in here and click on this, um, you would see that there is actually a video already loaded. Miss Carol has already done week one. Um, and so all four classrooms are seeing the same introductory video. Um, yes, that means that the content is middle ground, uh, maybe a little bit beneath our oldest and a little bit above our youngest. But that's where the parents come in, and that's where all the other content in the classroom comes in to help either fill it out and make it more robust or to bring it down to their level. So this is where we need your help in these weekly lesson videos right here. And again, if you want to participate in that, please feel free to contact me, and we can get that all set up and going. Uh, Carol Constantino and I would uh, certainly love your help with that so we don't have to record every single week's videos. Um, then the next step is the daily family scripture challenge. This is a place where the families can come every single day and find a different scripture challenge. The, the challenge idea is just this. We want them reading their Bibles every single day. And so we're giving them basically a reading plan. This is just a daily Bible reading plan. And here's day one on the 14th um, that talks about reading Genesis 1, 1 through 19 um, and some questions for reflection. This is the oldest class, so this is how we're handling it for them. We want those students going, grabbing their Bibles, looking it up, reading it together as a family, and then talking about these questions together as a family. Um, then uh, it is an assignment. There's no grades. They don't have to turn anything in. But if they wanted to, they could respond to this with any questions, comments, concerns that they had, and we can then interact with them via this module. That stream on the front side where we talked about having the content, they can respond there or it, they can respond when they're in this assignment and there will be a new stream started that we can all engage upon there. Um, the next step is weekly memory verses. Weekly memory verses um, for the oldest kids is the actual scripture verses. And so 
Um, we're, we're memorizing Psalm 19, part of Psalm 19 for the first week. So you'll see that listed here. And we give some ideas, you know, parents help your student learn these memory verses by reciting them around the house or um, sitting down, taking time to help them memorize them. This is another place where we can use your help because once the students learn the memory verses, we're encouraging them to upload their video of them saying them as uh, their assignment, if you will. And then uh, when we see those videos, it will trigger uh, you as teachers, we hope, um, to um, send them a memory verse reward. Now, you don't have to do this every single week. We can do this. You can do it weekly if you'd like to. But you could do it monthly, you could do it every couple of weeks. And what are we sending them? Well, um, we're thinking very, just very simple things that are either can either be mailed or dropped off to their house, whatever you're most comfortable with. Um, it could sometimes maybe be a small gift card, $5 or something uh, for you know, McDonald's. It could be, um, we're working on trying to get some certificates for some free, you know, like um, Frosties at Wendy's, that kind of thing. So some of those things we will make available to you. We're hopeful that teachers may be willing to invest a little bit in this and find some uh, affordable things that they could uh, send out to their own classes. If we all share this burden, I think it would be, um, be best all the way around. Um, so get together with the other teachers in your room and see how you wanna handle it and then get back to us and let us know. And we will certainly try to provide you anything you need in order to send those um, rewards out or to deliver those rewards to the students' homes. Um, Again, uh, you know, financially, if, if it's not an uh, opportunity for you or feasible for you right now to, to invest in that way, just let us know and we will make sure that we get stuff to you that you can send to your students. Um, dinner and discussion starters is the next category that you're gonna find in your classroom. Um, here in the oldest students, again, um, there is uh, a little bit of a difference between the oldest and the youngest. So here, uh, the question, it looks like this. It says, if you had to choose one famous person to be your new dad, who would you choose and why? These are not necessarily intended to be faith building um, discussion starters, perhaps. These are really kind of for fun. You know, later on, we talk about what one wild animal would you like to keep as a pet or other kinds of things like that. Um, there is some helpful hints right here on the front page for the parents. Um, discuss this question at the dinner table, then come back as a family and share your answer here. We're hoping that they will. We're hoping they will come back and they will upload something saying, when we talked about this, this funny story came up. When we talked about this, it reminded us of this thing that we experienced together, so on and so forth. So these are great places that, um, that students and parents and families would be interacting with us. And we hope you would interact with them in the streams that are developed here as well. You click on the question, you're going to see a stream of things if anybody has posted something. Um, the final category, oh, uh, by the way, these are not necessarily intended for every day, every single day. We have six of them up right now. We're, we're hoping if they choose one, maybe two a week, that would be awesome. We know that life gets crazy and maybe you're not all gathered around the table every single night. So, so we're hoping maybe if they'll just choose one or two a week even, that would be great. And we will update these from time to time. Um, we'll leave these up for a little bit. Then we'll have some of these be retired and we'll bring new ones in and so on and so forth. It's, it's, uh, it's just intended to be a bit of a fun thing. The last category is the family fun activities. The family fun activities um, include creative things like uh, Jello creation aquariums, where they're making a basically a Jello dessert that's in a mason jar that looks like an aquarium. It's fun to eat, it's fun to make, and it can remind us about how God created the fishes of the seas, for example. Um, here in the upper classroom, we have a hidden word find. You won't find that down in the lower classrooms because it's a little complex for them. Um, we've got a serpent sock craft. There's all kinds of fun things. Apple pie bites as we talk about Adam and Eve eating the apple. Uh, disappearing sin project. Um, lots of fun things. And these will be updated on a weekly basis. You notice they're also marked week one, week two. So the parents know which one goes with which week's activities. That's basically the gist of the classroom for junior high and the rest of the classrooms are gonna look very much like this. This is what the parents are gonna see when they log in. This is where they're gonna be interacting. Um, and remember, as a teacher, what we're asking most from you is to, that you would consider recording a lesson video based upon um, uh, talking points that I would send to you and that you would consider uh, following up on the memory verses for sending out the rewards. So we do need to hear from you um, about your interest 
interest in doing that, um, you can just email me or you could email Carol Constantino uh, as well. Uh, let me move on now to the third and fourth grade classroom. Again, it's going to look pretty much the same. Um, when we you, you've got this opening stream, which is just a general conversation tool. We can be talking between students and teachers and parents and teachers and myself, and this is just a great place to have conversation. The classroom looks almost identical to the junior high classroom. Starts with that welcome to CFCC Virtual Sunday School. We have lesson videos here. It's the same lesson video. Remember, all four classes get the same lesson video. We have weekly memory verses. It's gonna look pretty much the same as it did um, in uh, the junior high um, classroom for these guys. And same thing applies here. When they upload a video, then we would wanna send them some kind of a reward. Again, maybe on a weekly basis, maybe on a monthly basis, however often it makes sense to do that. Um, the daily family scripture challenge uh, is gonna look somewhat similar to the junior high, except for instead of just having the, the, the scripture quotation and asking them to go and find it, we've actually printed it here for them because it's taken from a special children's Bible that is only available online. You gotta have a membership for it. So we wanted to make that free, uh, available for free to all of our families. So they can just actually come in here, click on this, either print it out or read it from their computer and share it together as a family. And then there is, um, a simple question for reflection um, at the end of each day. The dinner and discussion starters are all the same across all the classrooms until we get down to the youngest classroom. Uh, and then the family fun activities, they're mostly gonna be the same. Um, there's gonna be a few little things that are swapped in and out based upon the age of the, of the students and the ability of the students, but for the most part, you're gonna see the same kind of activities and we're expecting the same things. They'll go out, do them, and then maybe upload a photo or upload some comment uh, about their family participating in doing these things. So that's the third and fourth grade classroom. Um, we move to our early uh, elementary classroom, preschool through second grade. Again, same concept. You're gonna see this, um, this uh, stream on the front side for conversation between the teachers and the students um, and myself and Miss Carol. And when we go into the classroom, you're gonna see it looks pretty much the same as well. Here's the virtual welcome with the virtual welcome video and the tutorial for them. We have the weekly lesson videos that are gonna be here. Again, the same across all four classrooms. Um, weekly memory verses. Now this one's gonna be a little different. So when we get to the younger kids, instead of necessarily even having them read through or, or memorize um, a particular piece of scripture, we've taken those pieces of scriptures and we've created sort of like catchy little limericks or poems or little songs to help them uh, memorize them easier. So instead of having them memorize some piece from Genesis 3, what we did is we kind of pared it all down. And so we've got this little poem, Adam and Eve did something bad. They ate the apple that made God sad. Um, and hopefully that would be easy enough for them to memorize uh, uh, over a week's time and then share a video of them saying it with us. Um, the Daily Family Scripture Challenge um, for these younger uh, elementary school kids. Again, we've got the um, scripture listed here. We've got the uh, content from the children's Bible that is already pre-printed um, for them. And they can just come in here and either print this or read this from here. And then there is a question for reflection for them for each and every day. And then there is the dinner discussion starters that are the same until we get down to that youngest level. Um, and then we have family fun activities. Again, you're gonna see variants based upon the age of the, the kids, but for the most part, they're gonna be relatively the same. So let's go to our youngest classroom then, the toddler room. Uh, the toddler room was a little bit of a challenge, but I think we figured out something pretty cool. So here um, in the toddler room, we're offering uh, some suggestions for them related to their daily family scripture challenge. Again, sitting down and just reading the Bible to a toddler is really complex. So we've got three children's Bibles that we're asking these families to purchase. Um, one is the Jesus Storybook Bible, one is the Big Picture Storybook Bible, and then the Complete Illustrated Children's Bible. If they purchase all three of these, again, they're talking about like $45 or so in um, investment. 
Um, and it's an it's a great investment. They'll be able to use these for a long time. If these are families that have first graders who are early readers, even second graders, these books are great for those kids to start reading back to the family. Um, and so it's just a great way for them to be able to engage those kids for a very long time. Um, teachers, you may want to consider purchasing these as well so that you are more well equipped to participate with the kids. Um, into the classroom, we'll find the same welcome content uh, and the same first week lesson video. When we get to our memory verse, we see those easy little limericks um, instead of scripture. So here we have Psalm 19.1. Heaven shows us what God has done. The skies were made by God's own hand, uh, making it easier for them to uh, memorize that scripture. The Daily Family Scripture Challenge isn't populated for these youngest kids because, again, we want to give them time to be able to purchase those three children's Bibles and participate with us. So we are not going to begin the Daily uh, Family Scripture Challenge with these students until um, October 5th, the first Sunday of October. And so they will start to see their Family Scripture Challenge populate after that. Now, you'll see here there's links to Amazon where they can actually purchase those three books um, very easily. They're also available through Christian book distributors, cbd.com, if you'd rather purchase them there or if the families would rather purchase them there. Um, and then uh, we get down to um, the dinner discussion starters. Now you'll see these are different for the youngest classroom. Um, things that we're asking here are things like, uh, what is your favorite animal? What do you like about it? And then we're encouraging the parents by saying, you know, this would be a great time to remind your young student that God made everything that we see, including the trees, the water, the sun, and animals too. Just very simple ways that we're asking them to engage with their kids uh, and their kids' faith development. Um, family fun activities. Um, Again, many of the same things like the Jello Creation Aquariums and the Apple Pie Bites and that kind of thing, but we also have some cool things we're going to be adding in here and, and in the earlier, the early elementary classroom um, from time to time. We've got some fun videos, um, uh, some cartoons, uh, some fun songs to sing together with some motions. Um, and so there's lots of great little fun things we're going to add in these family fun activities um, that are going to help to keep our toddler students interacting in Sunday school as well. Um, again, in every one of the classrooms, when they click on one of these things, they would be given um, the opportunity to upload something uh, or participate you know, by, by sharing something in a stream. Um, and we hope that the families are going to do that on a regular basis. Um, if you are a teacher and you have something where students are, 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 we're hoping they will return something like a video or something of that nature of them, for example, when they're memorizing their, their verses, when you go to your student answers page, um, which is this page right here, um, and you can, you can get to that, by the way, let me get back out of here and take you to that. So if I come in as a teacher and I look at the classwork and let's say I want to see memory verse week one, I want to see if anybody's uploaded anything. When I click on that, down here it says view assignment. When I click on view assignment, it's going to tell me zero have been turned in. Well, that's because nobody's even been told about it just yet. Um, but eventually, hopefully you'll, you'll see, there's a number there. Um, if you see zero and you continue to see zero, that means nobody's interacting with the content. Um, the reality is that could happen. Um, we hope it won't happen, but it very much could. But you would see it here and you would see any kind of responses that they made in this place and you could respond to them. Um, you're also, by the way, going to see it if we go back one page to here. You would see interaction here as well if there was any. Um, as teachers, we also have a page called People. It shows you who are the teachers of a particular classroom. And so in this particular classroom, we have, uh, this is the toddler classroom, so we've got the church is always going to be listed first, and then we've got Carol Consentino, myself, and Jerry Lee Linhorn, and Monica Camps, um, who are teachers in this classroom. Each of the classrooms are, are the same, just with their own teachers. And then once I load the students, which I haven't quite done yet, but I'm going to be doing later today, you would see all of the students listed here. And the last column is grades. Um, we don't have any students, so we don't have any grades to post. Um, and by the way, nothing is going to be graded, so there probably will never be anything for you to see in this grades column. 
it's kind of a quick overview of uh, the program, what we're hoping will happen um, in terms of the students and the parents' participation in it. Um, of course, I know you may still have questions. You may still be confused. Please feel free to reach out to me um, via email, via phone, whatever. I'd be glad, more than happy to uh, Zoom with you or meet with you at the church and walk you through this step by step. Um, but I think it's pretty self-explanatory once you get in. And I think it's going to be fun. And I'm, I'm really hoping that folks will engage with it. Again, any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. And I hope that you're all just being richly blessed in the midst of this time. We'll talk to you soon.